Hi friends, this is Caitlin. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm using this Framed Frights stamp set from um, Tim Holtz and Stampers Anonymous. Um, I also got the coordinating dies that I believe are exclusive through Simon Says Stamp. Um, and I got these because I don't own anything like them. Um, you guys know, you've seen my videos if you've been here before. Um, I am a Halloween crafting fiend and I own a lot of Halloween stamps, but this is such a unique look and a unique product and I loved how the dies worked for this, um, which I'll show you in a little bit, but I had to try this because I just, I don't own anything like this and I love seeing like grunge or grungy cards and like mixed media. I love seeing what um, Tim Holtz is like showing when he shows his um, inspiration release videos and it's just not usually my style. So it was so much fun to try to add a little grunge to my Halloween and so I wanted to share it with you. So the main thing I did for the this card, um, I just did it and I'll show it to you again. Um, it's such a little thing but it made a huge difference to the end result. I stamped my images with the Catherine Pooler S'mores which is just like a super dark rich brown. And then I shifted my stamp, or sorry, I shifted my paper like a sixteenth of an inch maybe to the left before I did my emboss, clear embossing powder. Um, and what this does is when I go over to ink these, it gives this little like white drop shadow kind of offset effect and I love how that turned out. I just kind of did it on a whim to see how it would look um, and I think it makes everything pop so much. Um, 10 out of 10 recommend. So once I had that embossing powder all melted, um, I did stamp a couple more. I, I knew I wanted to have a second one of the ghost scene because we're going to die cut the ghost out. Um, the the dies like I said are so cool for this and I also wanted that second tombstone but the problem was I removed the stamp after the brown and before the embossing so I ended up with an extra one that's fine I'll use it for something eventually um but I just I love I left in the embossing melting because that's like the best part um so then I went in with the s'mores ink on my blending brush and we're also going to bring in a little vintage photo here in a minute because I love this brown but I wanted something that also had a little more of like a golden undertone to it so we're going to combine them but I'm starting with kind of a vignette application so I'm focusing on the outer parts of the scene and I'm going to go just moving my paper in a circular kind of way I'm just going to work my way around all of the edges and really deepen up those outer corners and then you'll see in a second, I'm going to take my microfiber cloth and I'm going to wipe the extra ink off of that embossing and that white highlight pops through and is so cool. And this is when I was like, I like this. This is, this is definitely what I was looking for. So you can see, especially on those trees, that little white highlight, um, I just love it. I, it helps everything not feel like it's getting too dark because you're still getting that contrast um, and dimension. I just love it so much. So I repeated these steps with this ghosty panel, which I knew was going to be kind of the feature. That's why I didn't start with it. <laughs> so that I could kind of test out on one of the other panels first. The main thing I wanted to share about this card and kind of how it made me feel while I was creating um, I think it's great for us to kind of have our own personal styles, but I also think that there's so much you can get out of trying something new. So I'm just hoping that my kind of experimenting with adding some grunge and kind of changing things up will inspire you to either add some grunge or maybe, you know, focus on a different technique that you're not used to doing. Um, but it's fun to experiment and just not be scared to just go for it. Um, my favorite grungy thing that I've learned over the years, which was 100% by accident, um, is to 
when you add splotches of water or like spray water on your piece and then um, lift the ink, right? You like dry it off with a paper towel and it lifts the ink. Um, if you then go back in with more ink, it'll hold on to that ink differently because the paper is wet there. So that gives those darker splotches. So if you like that kind of water stained look or the shapes that the ink makes when you reactivate it and lift it, but you want the color to be darker, try that out. Put your water down, pick it up with your paper towel or cloth or whatever, and then go in with more ink um, because it gives a really cool effect. So I use that coordinating die that's the frame. So it's the same frame for all four images. And then there's dies for the main image from each picture. So the ghost, each tombstone, and then there's like a, a spooky house. So I used the ghost die to just cut the ghost. And then I used the frame to cut all of my three images out. And I'm using a couple of them more than once. So I wanted them to kind of look like old Polaroids kind of laid out on a table. Um, and so I kind of took the extra corners that were hanging off. And after I trimmed them, I added them to other corners to kind of give that effect that there's the scene continues on past what we can see. So I'm popping one of those up on that top corner and I'll just trim that little bit off as well. But this was a nice way to kind of get the most out of my three scenes without having to um, cut another one. For my ghost, I did go in with a little bit of those same brown colors right around the edges. I wanted it brighter than the rest of the images on the card, but I didn't want it to be stark white. Um, I ended up putting some dark shadows around this wood um, wood grain cardstock background and I like the depth but I kind of wish that I had picked a brown or a color that would popped more because everything everything on this card is so monochromatic is so brown um, I'm not sure what color I would have done but I kind of just wish that the background had had a little more color to it I don't know you tell me um, is the monochromatic cool and kind of goes with the grunge or does everything kind of blur together? I'm a little bit undecided. I still love it. I can tell you that. I still do love it. So I'm attaching my main panel to this black border. Um, I was going to go craft, but there just wasn't enough contrast with how dark my image is stamped. I knew I wanted to bring in the black. So that tiny little thin frame really helps to balance everything out for me. Um, and then I popped up my last little square image with that foam. And I have some thin foam squares, the teeny tiny ones from Simon Says Stamp behind that ghost. So he has just the littlest hint of extra dimension there. Um, my sentiment, I'm going to stamp the, the dead of night sentiment onto a scrap of the same paper I was using for the rest of my scenes. I did the same trick where I slid that over just a hair before I stamped it with my embossing ink. We're going to go over it with the clear one more time. And then I'm going to ink that paper up with the same vintage photo and s'mores inks. Um, and also trim it down so that we have that nice little thin banner. I don't think I realized how out of focus that was. Um, <laughs> before I do that, I did want to add in some sparkle. I thought that might help since it was kind of turning in to so much um, brown. I know that my sequins are also brown, but I think the difference in texture and adding in that shine helps to break it up a little bit. Um, and I kind of had this vision of like, this old antique table that just has like crystals and knickknacks and these spooky photos on it. I don't know. Sounds like something that should be in a horror movie um, for sure. And if there's not a time you can make that that's not like right now, when is it? You know what I mean? Now's the perfect time for that kind of crafting. Um, so I started out a little lighter with my blending on this. We're going to add a little more once we get it trimmed down. And I also added some watered down ink and little splotches, splatters, splutters, whatever. 
spatter. Is that the one? I don't know. Um, I'm not sure where we ever ended up on that argument either. <sighs> anyway, I trimmed out my um, sentiment just with my wire trimmer. Here's where I'm adding in that extra ink because I really wanted that highlight to pop. We'll wipe everything off of the glass mat and the extra ink from that embossing powder. I'm going to pop that up with the same thin, thin foam squares that the ghost is popped with and tuck that right underneath that photo. And I just, this is so fun and a little grunge and still has a little sparkle and shine. And I hope that this encourages you to try something new for yourself for Halloween. I hope that you have the most amazing weekend. I'll see you back here soon. And until next time, guys, happy crafting. Thank you.